When I was a small, fragile, delicious, minuscule little child, I witnessed a tale known as The Journey to the West, and this is my power pole behind me. The character in The Journey to the West, who was not the main character, but the main focal point, the inspiration for Goku, the inspiration for Naruto, the inspiration for many alike, was Soon. Wukong, not Sun Wukong. I keep seeing people say Sun Wukong, and it's really messing me up mentally and emotionally and spiritually, and it's messing up my brain. It is Sun Wukong. Recently, a game called Negro Myth, sorry, Black Myth came out. Wukong. Black Myth Wukong is one of the greatest games of all time. I've been witnessing discourse about the game. I've been seeing people say it's anti-woke. I'm not here to talk about any about that. I'm here to gush about a character that I grew up enjoying and you're going to learn about him with me too. So let's get into it. My father, toxic, manipulative, narcissistic, abusive, alcoholic that he was, taught me how to read. He taught me to pick up a book and don't put it down until I get to the very end of that book. So what happened? Well, he taught me about the career. Quran, the Bible, and the only biblical piece that I really care about, the only religious book that really matters, The Journey to the West. I still don't know which direction that is on the compass, but we're not going to talk about that. The Journey to the West. The Journey to the West was a series of 100 chapters, 2,000 pages about spreading Buddhism to the world and showing the intricate minutia of how it operated. Is that what people want you to believe? No. You see, The Journey to the West is about Sun Wukong whooping ass deliciously and powerfully going through the confines of the world and being absolutely diabolical with it that is what the journey to the west is about me if you've ever seen an anime have you ever seen a shonen if you've ever seen things like one piece if you've ever seen luffy go crazy and buck wild against somebody monkey d luffy why is he monkey d luffy sun wukong the stone monkey is a monkey hence why you're probably wondering why does in dragon ball z does he have a tail why are saiyans turning into big gigantic Organic Ozaru's big apes. Why is that going on? Well, every single piece of anime, all of it, Ashura's Wrath, Dragon Ball Z, Naruto even, can all be traced to the progenitor of everything, the stone monkey himself, put inside of a big, long, cylindrical pillar until he was cracked down into a tiny egg, and the tiny egg was filled with the biblical power of Sun Wukong, the most ignorant, the most powerful, the most devastating, the trickster god beyond Loki. That is Sun Wukong, the most important character in fiction period ever. Now, many people are gonna tell you, well, it's Sun Wukong, it stopped right there. He pronounced the name incorrectly, ignore him. He stuttered, his word meanings are worthless. His words are worthless. When you stutter, your words are worthless. Jot that down, know that immediately. Whenever someone stutters, say, oh, your opinion doesn't matter because they stuttered. I want you to tell you that right now. That's how you operate. That's how you get past and win any argument on the planet. Sun Wukong didn't come into this world he came onto the stomach of gaia that is what sun wukong did he is somebody so powerful so hairy so deliciously vitriolic that some people can't even fathom the ignorance that comes through his body how do we know that he is powerful how do we know that he is the greatest of all time let's talk about his origins and beginnings how did he become the monkey king sun wukong well a bunch of monkeys were looking at a waterfall and they said look over there if a monkey jumped in that waterfall and saw what was inside it, we'd make him the monkey king. And he said, bet. <coughs> I got you. Hold on. <laughs> he was eating a banana at the time and was choking on it. As the banana was pretty big, that's homosexual. Now then, he proceeded to go without saying pause upon eating that banana, jump inside that waterfall. And all the other monkeys followed him. All the stone monkeys deemed him as the monkey king. He then learned immortality immediately and the ability to transform into 72 different things. I will go through each all the 72 transformations. First, he can turn to a black man. He can turn to a black man. He can turn to a black man, a bird, a black man. He can turn to Martin Luther King. He can turn to Malcolm X. He can turn to Rosa Parks. He can turn into a black man. As And those are all 72 of his transformations if you do that in dog years. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, that's not 72. Well, I can't count. Anyways, the beauty of Sun Wukong isn't the fact that a matter of, well, he just does everything impulsively. No, he does everything impulsively and wins. He was told that, oh, it's time for you to die. Oh, is it? So he went to hell and wrote his name out of the Book of the Dead. He used Whiteout by beating up everybody in hell, then coming right back up. And this is before his power pole and his staff. This is before all that. This is before every single semblance of all that nonsense. He, he didn't do anything of that variety. What happened next? 
that Sun Wukong did that made him such a powerful, diabolical man. Sun Wukong then went up to heaven, beat up the Jade Emperor, and then proceeded to eat more immortality pills. And then he became mortal again, and he became mortal again through many various different means. After doing all this, after finding the power pole extend, after doing all these things, what did he do? What did Sun Wukong do? Well, he beat up all the demon generals, and he became best friends with all the demon generals. After becoming best friends with all the demon generals, and the heavens being scared of the power that he was, they tried to burn him alive inside of a stake, and after burning him alive for, what was it, 72 hours, he popped out and showed niggas. That's right, he Kendrick Lamar'd them. You'll love to see it. That's the beauty of what Sun Wukong is. Some people are questioning and thinking to themselves, wait a second, you haven't described what Sun Wukong is. How did he start? What, what, is he like a prophet or nope? He's just ignorant. He's so ignorant, he willed himself into existence. And then after all this, the Buddha in himself, Maitreya and Incarnate, he proceeded to say, all right, Sun Wukong, if you can jump out of the palm of my hand, I'll make sure that nobody messes with you. As a matter of fact, you can do whatever you want to. He said, I just got to jump out of the palm of your hand. 100%. Sun Wukong then proceeded to jump out of the palm of his hand. And he reached all the way to the edge of the universe. Peed at the pillar of the universe. Took a poop, put some graffiti on there. And then he proceeded to play on Roblox for 13 hours and jump back. And then he said, I did it. Uh, what's going on? And then Buddha said, you did not jump out of the palm of my hand. And then we looked deep inside the Buddha's palm. And what did we see? Well... Inside of the Buddha's palm was the entire universe. Sun Wukong said, whoops. He tried to run away, but Buddha placed a mountain on top of him. And then the Sun Wukong said, well, I guess I'm stuck here for 500 years. 500 years. Sun Wukong laid there deliciously, beautifully supple, one might say. Until the main character's journey to the West did all these adventures with him, and then he proceeded to do the, basically, the villain of the week shonen anime trope is what happened over and over again. He met a pig. Nobody cares about any of that. I'm not here to recount you the journey to the West. Go read a book and figure it out yourself. I'm here to gush about Sun Wukong. Many people don't know this, but Sun Wukong actually is a Chinese tale. That's right. China made this, and Japan said, we have Goku. Sun Wukong is the Goku of China, if you want to put it, phrase it like that. Ashura's wrath, being betrayed by your people, being destroyed, being locked away and cast aside, being destroyed and reincarnated over and over again, and then using your true immortality, tricking people, using devious tactics, that is Sun Wukong. If you want to read a tale of epic proportion, if you want to know why Sun Wukong is such a powerful, devastating, mongrel of a creature, then go ahead and pick up the journey to the West. I'm not sponsored by Journey to the West. I'm not telling you, oh, I, did, I, I read the book, so it's the greatest thing on the planet. I'm telling you that there is nothing better, nothing greater, no tale of fiction that comes close to the beauty and excellence that is the Journey to the West. And I love that. Now, I am here to explain to you that if you're playing Black Myth Wukong, and you got to this point in the video and you're playing Black Myth Wukong, it is not the story of the journey to the West. Everything that happens in Black Myth Wukong happens extensively after Sun Wukong achieves Buddhahood. He is complex, multiversal, if you want to use power scaling and put it in that capacity. He is devastatingly powerful. However, what I do want to tell you is that Sun Wukong is one of the greatest things of all time. The main reason I'm even making this video is to get people to pronounce his name correctly. As a matter of fact, the only reason I gushed about this, the only reason I'm giving a tale of expertise about the story of Sun Wukong is so people pronounce his name correctly. I keep hearing people say his name incorrectly. This is Sun Wukong. This is Sun Wukong. Nope, it's Sun Wukong. That is the main reason behind this. It's Chinese phonetics. Learn different languages. Learn at least to pronounce things correctly. Roll your R's when you say my name, by the way. I'm so sick of this nonsense. It messes me up so deeply. Back when I was younger, after my dad extensively beat the crap out of me for putting uh, grilled cheese on the stove without a pan, and he tried to teach me a lesson by instilling disgusting verbal abuse and physical abuse into my small body, and my ribs were busted, and my fingers were cracked, and my body got stronger because I kept getting micro fractures from the beatings that I got when I was younger. 
I would read the journey to the West and pick up a random chapter and just do that. It is my comfort tale. It is my comfort story. It is a tale that I go through in my entire life. And I want people to enjoy this with me. I want people to rejigulate and feel the power of this tale with me. I want people to have a comfort tale. Sure, you have the Bible. Sure, you have the Quran. You might even have the Bodhisattva or the Karma Sutra or something like that. You might have tales that make you feel powerful. Dr. Seuss included all these stories that make you feel like a real person. I want to tell you that that monkey behind me right now, Sun Wukong, is the only character who I felt a spiritual connection with. Freakazoid, The Mask, Goku, Monkey D. Luffy, Naruto. All of these other characters that experienced the beauty of what they were. We experienced them. We were able to enjoy their tales and their stories. Naruto, a mischievous kid who went through all these horrifying traumatic things and was sad because of it. Goku, a mischievous kid with a monkey tail, with the playful nature of a monkey, having a powerful demon inside of him. That is the same as Naruto, that is the same as Dragon Ball Z. Monkey D. Luffy is a goof who is having a, D, a god inside of him. The clouds that go through the Monkey D. Luffy form when he unleashes his superpower form, Nika, N-I-K-A, Nika, that power that goes through his body is an allusion to the Monkey King. Everything with making clones of yourself, after image techniques, all these things, using magical transformations, transforming trickster status. Every single aspect of Sun Wukong is exemplified in the beauty of every tale that copies a small fraction of what he is. Sun Wukong has inspired everything from everything you witness that involves anime, from everything you witness that involves a power fantasy it all stems from the journey to the west it is modern day africa you know how black people will say we invented everything and people call black people monkeys because they're racist well this monkey actually invented everything he actually did it monkeys return to monkey that's why it's such a powerful statement return to monkey we went through the evolutionary chain and soon wukong was the most pivotal step he was the next step in evolution he was a god he did that he put his nuts on people's foreheads and they were sweaty and they were musty and they were salty and people sucked them. People sucked the nuts. That's what they did. They were filled with chocolate. They were filled with raisins and people were slumping and slumping on them. It was disgusting. But guess what? We all have a little bit of Wukong inside of us. The Monkey King. Sun Wukong. The Celestial Demon. The Heavenly Yaksha. Don Quixote, Do Flamingo, one might say if you watch One Piece. These characters all inspired all different aspects of what the original progenitor was. That is who he is. Somebody that is filled with rage, malice, somebody that is wise and condescending, somebody that is uninhibited, uninhibited, reckless, somebody that feels the power of emotion throughout the entire soul and confines, somebody that has the power pole that weighs over 11,000 pounds and is able to put it in the back of his ear because he has the strength of God beyond him. Beyond God, he has Buddha. Beyond Buddha, he has him. He is him. He is the only one that matters. He is the only character in fiction that is important. He is the Monkey King, Sun Wukong. And I wish for you to enjoy the tale of him. I wish for you to go read the book Journey to the West. I wish for you to take a second out of your busy, horrifyingly evil day where you haven't done the dishes, where you haven't taken a shower, where you feel depressed like a sack of garbage because your life is in shambles, where you hate your boss, where you do all these things. And I want you to just read. I want you to sit down and read a story, a tale about something that is bigger than you, but also is you. We are monkey. Return to the essence of the monkey king. And if you're playing Back from Wu Kong, a great game, it's amazing. I'm happy that you're enjoying it. I want you to understand that this game is a big monument for me. It is a movement. It is a spectacle. It is one of the games that make me feel like a person again. I don't care about the compad. I don't care about the gameplay. I care about the movement that the game inspired. I care about what the game represents. 
We haven't had a proper Wukong game ever. Sure, Warriors of Rochi 2 put them in certain games. There are multiple, many games that feature Sun Wukong. There are so many iterations of him throughout narratives and things of that variety. There's him in God of High School where he is Ja Sang Dae Chong or something of that variety. I don't know how to say his name correctly because I don't know Korean at all. But there are so many iterations of what he is. And I need you to take a moment out of your life. You're busy. So, so important life. And just read a tale about somebody who changed and shaped the foundation of fiction and history forever. That is Sun Wukong. Thank you. I'm going to go make breakfast now. It's 10 in the morning and I'm very hungry. Bye.